please stand? Good morning and welcome. Let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, in today's gospel, Jesus tells his disciples three times they are not to fear. With abounding trust in the mercy of God, let us turn and ask for his pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you are the champion of the poor and the downcast. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, through you, we are given everlasting life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to be courageous in faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise to the Lord, for he has recused the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Response is, Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love. For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. 
I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my children. Because zeal for you, for, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blast me, you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bountiness is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. See you lowly ones and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds uh, he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, in your great love, answer me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if, the, by, if, for if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? And yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs on your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Heavenly Father. Well, this week we're back to wearing green on Sunday. We're, we've been in ordinary time for the last two weeks, um, but um, the first two weeks of Sundays of ordinary time, the 10th and the 11th um, Sundays of ordinary time, were trumped by the um, solemnities of the Holy Trinity and of Corpus Christi last week. So 
we've entered into ordinary time, this time of living and growing in our faith. Not that there's anything ordinary about it, but it, sometimes it's often referred to as regular life. But life has been anything but regular and normal um, the last few months, weeks, and even days. And, you know, there's all this conversation going on about what will the, the new normal be for just, again, in the last month and weeks and days. We've experienced the, the corona pandemic, the stay-at-home orders and social distancing and, and um, wearing face masks. And we've seen the violence and protests against social justice um, and um, in um, our world and the results of prejudice and and just this last week, the Supreme Court's very flawed attempt at redefining human sexuality, which is another attack against the dignity of the human person and to religious freedom. But all that being said, we are um, in ordinary time, in a time of living and growing in our faith. And again, um, um, Jesus makes it very clear in our gospel today that there are going to be joys and challenges in every moment of our lives, especially living a life that is Christ-centered. And um, in the last couple of weeks, and again since um, the 10th and 11th Sunday were trumped by, again, Holy Trinity Sunday in Corpus Christi, Jesus, and he continues today, to prepare his disciples to go out on mission and to make that mission successful they must proclaim and make public everything that jesus has taught them they must give full exposure not secretly or concealed in the darkness or conveyed in whispers his teachings should be loud clear and bold and to do that there's our, all three of our readings today kind of point to two truths True, reality, true realities of what successful discipleship and living in Christ is all about. First and foremost, we have to remember, to know and remember that we are greatly loved, that God, our creator, who willed us into being out of love, knows each and every one of us intimately. And as our gospel says, he has counted all the hairs on our heads. We are precious to him. You know, they say one of the biggest issues, especially among young people today, is that they don't realize that they are loved. And, um, you know, that's something that we always need to, and the main reason is because they don't have God in their life. And... Um, and again, we need to be conduits of that love, to realize that we have been loved, and in turn, you know, love, our, love God, love ourselves, and we need to love our neighbor. And the second great truth of what it means to be a, a, a faithful disciple and to be successful is that sometimes, and all too often, and it happens regularly, we will experience suffering, we will be ridiculed, we will be mocked and it'll, it'll feel like we're being held captive or being held in bondage by the way other people treat us and reject us for proclaiming the truth of Jesus Christ. Being a follower of Christ does not entitle us to comfort or luxury or safety. In fact, the reality is just the opposite. You know, it's, Jesus warns his disciples before he sends them out that, that they, will, they will be met with derision, that they will be hated because of him and because of his name. And you would think, with such a dire warning, that the disciples wouldn't have walked or run away. But no, Jesus reassures them just as he reassures each and every one of us and encourages us um, that, again, that we are loved. And even though we might experience derision or ridicule or mockery or feel like we're being held captive or held in bondage, that we are not to fear, that God has our back. He has our best interest at heart. And we cannot operate out of fear. Operating out of fear is 
like being a hamster on a, on, on a wheel. You're just gonna spin your wheels and you're not gonna go anywhere. In fact, if we stay stuck in that fear, um, it will erode our faith and lead us away from Jesus Christ. And so, and even, you know, again, even if we experience this hatred, again, we're not to fear no one or nothing. Um, because we have to remember that being in, made in God's image and likeness, our souls, our very beings, are protected by the God of everlasting life. And again, we should never operate out of fear. We always need to be confident in the fact that God loves us and that he has our back, that we are to trust him. And that's not easy to do. We want to hold on to the things of the world. You know, we want to hold on to these temporal things, these fleeting things that give us you know, momentary, instantaneous satisfaction. But that's it. It's just very momentary in that moment. The only sure thing, brothers and sisters, that we have in our lives is the love of God and that Jesus Christ suffered on the cross and died and rose from the dead for our sins and to bring about our salvation. So as we enter this time of living and growing in Christ, again, we are to, to anchor ourselves and, and to go into the deep of these two truths, that discipleship involves hardship and that we are deeply loved by God. And only then can we totally place our trust and be totally dependent on God. We are to proclaim the gospel with wholeheartedly we are to be bold and steadfast in this task. And Jesus makes it very clear if, in our gospel today, if we do that, we will be rewarded by God. As Jesus said, everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is sent into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Whoever belongs to Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. New things have come. With a longing for this newness, we turn to the Father with our prayers. That all those who are set apart to preach, to teach, or to minister in the church will witness to Jesus Christ fearlessly and without compromise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our church, 
that we may celebrate and welcome the diverse faces of Christ in our community, our worship, our ministries, and our leaders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who govern nations will protect human rights, further the work of justice, and advance the freedom of those in their charge, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents and educators, that we may teach our children how to resolve differences nonviolently and respectfully, and have the courage to model it in our own behavior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who suffer may find their way in life, allowing themselves to be touched by the heart of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are trapped in lives of sin, that the gift of Jesus Christ will free them from their bonds, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on all fathers and their families on this Father's Day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Robert Kritz Kritzler and Tim Carberty, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for Jerry Meelan, father of Anne Clow, that has the gracious gift of Jesus Christ overflows they may taste the sweetness of eternal, of life eternal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to live without fear, acknowledging Christ in all that we say and do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we offer you our prayers with ardent faith. Strengthen that faith and keep us true to you through Christ our Lord, amen. I'd like to ask all the fathers to remain standing and I'll bestow the church's blessing on you on this Father's Day. Fathers, bow down for God's blessing. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the dear Lord keep you now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosan in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosan in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord. Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day, especially you fathers, and a blessed week to all.